In the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that went into motion last month, Congress included a 20 percent deduction for sole proprietors and owners of pass-through businesses. It was an attempt to lower the tax rate on non-C corporate businesses to get it closer to the new 21 percent rate. Joining us now is Professor of Agricultural Law and Taxation at the Washburn University School of Law, Roger McOwen. Thanks so much for joining us, Roger. And let's start with an overview of the QBI deduction and its impact on pass-through businesses. Well, you're right, Christina. It is a specialized deduction that does apply to pass-through businesses. So uh, you can apply it against business income for non-C corporations that aren't certain types of specified service businesses. So if you're just in a service business, such as a law firm or accounting firm, you can't use this one. But some of the basic points are, is yes, it's a 20% deduction, but the formulas and the definitions that are used to implement the 20% deduction are incredibly complex. Plus, once you get above a W-2 wage limitation threshold, uh, there is another rule that comes into a, to play that could limit the use of the deduction. Complex. That's a good way to put it. Now, we, as I understand it, the QBI must be earned in a qualified trade or business, but how will trade or business actually be defined? Yeah, that's a really good question. We really don't know the answer to that yet. I think it'll be the standard what we call in, in the practice the 162 definition for trader business. That's the one that's most generally understood. But I think the impact for farmers and the main question where it comes up is whether uh, rental activities are going to count as a trader business. And if so, if it's the 162 definition, then if I have a cash lease uh, rent rent situation as a landlord, then I'm not m materially participating in a trader business. That's a rental activity, and so my income from a cash rent would not be eligible for the 20% deduction. So I would need some sort of share lease, such as a material participation crop share lease or material participation livestock share lease. But technically, we don't know the answer to that yet because we don't have regulations from the Treasury Department. Okay. Now, I understand one issue that senators are currently working on is a technical correction that would balance out how the QBI deduction with respect to ag products sold to a cooperative and those to a non-cooperative will be handled. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, this is really controversial right now. What is the what what the rub is is that the deduction is basically 20% of taxable income, less capital gains in the hands of a taxpayer that is a patron of a co-op that sells to the co-op. So if you're in the 35% tax bracket, that's going to reduce your effective rate by seven percentage points. That's pretty big. But if you don't sell ag products to a co-op, uh, say you sell them, for example, to a private elevator, then the deduction is 20% of net farm income. And so that's often going to result in a lower deduction. But um, that's really where the focus right now of a possible technical correction by a couple of senators um, is at. They're focusing on that to try and balance out sales to a co-op compared to sales to a non-co-op. That was an unintended, uh, I don't know if it was a drafting error, but it was an unintended result of the way the statute worked out. Okay. I really love reading your blog. An easy way to find it is just to Google Roger McOwen blog, and then you'll have all the information right there in front of you. Roger McOwen with the Washburn University School of Law, thank you so much for joining us today and helping us sort out some very difficult to understand information.